Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand for its and gold fundamental and technical analysis for the week ahead starting the 10th of March. And um, if you enjoy and find the videos that I provide every weekend useful, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share the videos uh, across uh, YouTube and your other socials. This is a free way to support the channel. And uh, getting into the week ahead, and this is from the tradingeconomics.com website. And it says in the United States, financial markets will have their eyes on the US inflation rate alongside retail sales, producer inflation, the Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index and industrial production. In the UK, attention will turn to the unemployment rate, industrial production, GDP growth figures for January and foreign trade statistics. And finally, industrial production figures for the euro area, along with the NAB Business Confidence Index from Australia will provide further indicators of global economic conditions. So quite a few things going on this week. Definitely a big week for uh, the US and the UK. So let's see what happens um, there. So before we get into um, some fundamentals and more technicals, just a bit of a trade update and some trade analysis on the New Zealand dollar, US dollar. Now this trade... Um, I took um, around the uh, the 1st of March, Friday the 1st of March, and it was really after the ISM manufacturing PMIs, and there was a, it's a bit of disappointing news. The forecast had come out as 49.5, and the actual had come out as 47.8. Now, I ended up taking a trade um, on the Friday and it was on this uh, this candlestick here on a six hour chart. And um, if you don't really know or you have your, you know you're a first time watcher, um, I uh, typically enter or try to enter into three positions. Uh, one is a market order, and then the other two positions are a fifty percent uh, buy retracement pending order as well as a, about a 95% buy pending order if, if prices you know do come back. So I can get in at a better price and get better risk reward on some trades. And if I'm right about the trade, then um, you know we should want to go obviously higher. So fundamentally, um, the New Zealand dollar, the RBA are, uh, are seen as cutting rates later than the US. So the US are seen as cutting rates sooner. And um, interest rates are a main driver of um, of a currency, um, you know, valuation. And so the really the objective is to uh, look for divergences in interest rates or you're looking for um, leading and lagging indicators. So in terms of interest rates, so again, who's holding for longer, who's looking to, you know, cut or hike rates later or sooner. And so uh, in this case, the RBA are looking to cut rates sooner, as I said before, I'm mean, sorry, cut rates later. And so, um, and so that should actually uh, appreciate the currency over, over a central bank that is looking to cut rates sooner. And so uh, the idea was that um, there was a bit of weakness coming into the dollar. And again, you can check, by the way, last week's uh, video analysis on uh, the dollar. And I did change my bias and did say that there was I was expecting some weakness on the dollar. Um, and so uh, basically the trade was that uh, I entered into um, an entry at the 0 0.6192 area. As prices started pulling back to the 50% area, I entered again into a pending order entry, buy entry at 0 0.6093, and then another one at 0 0.6076 area around there. And um, and again, uh, fortunately enough for me, the fundamentals did play out um, when they were supposed to, and prices ended up going higher. So I ended up making a a one to one on the uh, on the on the lower pending order trade right so taking uh, one to one about 15 pips off there and then on the second position ended up taking a one to one off that one and that was around about 
29.30 pips. And then I was swing trading uh, this uh, final market position as prices continue going higher. And I took off uh, the majority of profits, about 75% uh, of profits as it reached 80% of uh, what is known as the auction or the range. So you've got uh, from this uh, high to where uh, this low came in, 80% is somewhere around here. So that's where I end up taking about 75% of my uh, profit and I've got about 25% uh, left of that position uh, to try and swing trade it up to these highs. And that's providing the dollar does continue to uh to, to to be weak and again we've got some data coming out this week um which we'll get into a bit later inflation is going to be the main one so if inflation comes out uh, lower than expected or lower than forecasted as well as um i think there's um some other data but yeah if inflation comes out lower than expected uh, towards the two percent central bank's two percent target then you should expect really this to continue going higher and the dollar to devalue so let's see what happens there but that was uh uh the uh the trade analysis uh and that, that i took and um also as well in terms of uh, an update um uh, on the uh, euro australian dollar and the uh, cad yen which again uh, if you go to last week's video and uh, you know look at the first uh, part of the uh, trade uh, the video you'll see uh, the analysis breakdown but if we go to the euro was he I ended up getting stopped out on a final position, so I was profitable on two positions, and then my final position, my market order, ended up being stopped out, so that's that, but still a profitable trade overall. And the CAD yen um, as well has been a really nice trade again, profitable on two positions, got an open position still remaining, and uh, yeah, this is being um, um, uh, traded. And at the moment, I'm up 2.21% on that final position. So, again, just um, goes to show that the fundamentals do uh, play out. And uh, when they do, um, you can stay in trades for longer and have a bit more conviction um, in your trades. And as long as the data does support your fundamentals, you can keep a hold of them and keep a hold and, uh, and, and swing trade uh, to your uh, heart's content, hopefully. So um, let's see how far this does go, but um, as well as the, uh, the, um, the New Zealand dollar. And uh, yeah, let's see how that plays out. So getting into the week's analysis and again, starting off on the, um, the dollar index. And this is the equally weighted dollar index. And again, I will leave the calculation for this in the video kind of explaining why I use an equally weighted index rather than something like the DXY or the USDX in terms of um, looking at overall dollar strength and weakness. So um, again, just looking at the where, where we are in terms of the dollar um, I do think this week is going to be very, very pivotal in terms of, um, you know, if, the, if, the, if inflation data comes out and it's sticky or at least uh, comes in higher than expected, then you're likely to see the dollar look to, um, look to uh, appreciate. Um, and if not, if it, you know, in terms of inflation starts to come down, uh, then it will really uh, signal that the Fed are likely to continue to uh, hike in, uh, sorry, to cut in June. And so, again, this week, in terms of uh, Friday's data that came out, so US jobless rate hits two year high, even as higher as hiring stays strong. So, payrolls rose uh, 2.75 thousand, 275,000 in February after downward revisions and traders boost bets for Fed interest rate cuts in June. And a lot of traders who um, would have been trading on Friday would have been wondering why the dollar uh, was selling off, right? Because uh, the headline numbers are, um, are, are quite positive, even though they were uh, off downward, um, uh, revised downward afterwards. But it was still, you know, pretty positive. Um, and uh, the, really the reason why is because the um, 
the unemployment rate and wage uh, growth um, were confirming that inflation is coming down. So I'll read this and it says here that the jobless rate climbed to a two year high in February, even as hiring remained healthy, pointing to a cooler yet resilient labour market. So non-farm payrolls advanced 275,000 last month following a combined 167,000 down revision to the um, to the prior two months, a Bureau of Labor Statistics report showed Friday the unemployment rate rose to three point nine percent and wages wage gains slowed, and that really is important. And the reason why that's important is because of something called uh, correlation um, uh, between inflation and wage, uh, or unemployment and inflation. Uh, called the Phillips Curve, and you can find this on Investopedia if you type in, you know, this headline: "How Inflation and Unemployment Are Related." And um, it's known really as the Phillips Curve. And so uh, the idea is that inflation and unemployment are typically have an inverse correlation. So when you have unemployment rising, what should happen is you have inflation falling. Yeah, and when you have unemployment falling, you should have inflation rising. Yeah. So it says here in times of high unemployment, wages typically remain stagnant and wage inflation, right, or, or rising wages is non-existent. So again, unemployment, high unemployment, you have non-existent inflation or, or low inflation. And in times of low unemployment, employers typically need to pay higher wages to attract employers ultimately leading to rising wage inflation, right? And so wage inflation is a bit of a proxy for inflation in the economy. And so, again, going back to the article, you had the combination of um, higher unemployment, so unemployment rose to 3.9%, and wage gains, uh, wage gains slowed, yeah? And so if wage gains are slowing, that means that inflation is coming down to the central bank's 2% target. Therefore, the, Fed, the Federal Reserve are likely to cut sooner, right? Or at least cut in June. So it says here that the report illustrates a labor market that is gradually downshifting with more moderate job and pay gains that suggest the economy will keep expanding without much risk of a reacceleration in inflation, and that is important. Such a combination gives room for the Federal Reserve policymakers to lower interest rates this year. So although loads of traders were going probably long and being stopped out, in fact, what you know the uh, the market was focused on was the um, it was inflation and the fact that the data was showing that the Federal Reserve are likely to continue to you know, uh, on their uh, cutting path. And the federal uh, CME FedWatch tool, if we go to June, um, we'll see that there's a 70, 73% chance of an ease and a 26% chance of a no change. And the more that the market prices in an ease is the more that the dollar will devalue or is likely to devalue. And that's the reason why last week when I was talking, when prices were up here, if you go back to last week's video, you'll note, you'll, you know, you'll, you'll hear me say that um, I'm looking for, I think it's the, the dollar's going to roll over this week and, uh, and, and be a short. Of course, it could have went higher, but I thought that the dollar was expensive in and around this area. And therefore, that's the reason why, you know, I did go uh, long on the uh, New Zealand dollar, uh, US dollar, right? Uh, for, for for that reason. <clears throat> so um, the dollar going forward, uh, again, this week, nobody knows what's going to happen with CPI, but it could be an opportunity to buy the dollar if um, you are, um, if the data does support a buy in inflation, CPI remains a bit sticky in terms of, um, you know, it doesn't come down or if it goes higher than expected, then in fact, that will probably likely support the uh, dollar. But Anything other than that in terms of inflation coming down means that the dollar is likely to uh, sell off. So let's see what happens this week. Um, moving on to the uh, dollar yen. And the yen um, has strengthened this week. And it's really been based on 
uh, bets, um, you know, ramping up that the Bank of Japan uh, bets swing towards March rate hikes. So higher pay, uh, the last peak, the let me get my words out. The last piece in puzzle needed for shit policy shift and some BOJ officials favor early rate move, people familiar say. And so speculation surged that the Bank of Japan will move this month to raise interest rates for the first time since 2007 after a flurry of reports and wage figures helped drive up the yen, bond yields, and overnight swaps. So bets on the 19th uh, and 18th and 19th of March meeting are gaining traction as reports emerge that some of the Bank of Japan officials favor an early move, while some government officials also support a rate hike. And Japan really are the only bank that this, you know, in the G10 that are looking to uh, hike rates. So economists and investors are largely in agreement that the central bank will scrap the world's last remaining negative rate either this month or in April. And so the yen rallied as much as 1.2% against the dollar on Thursday, the strongest in over a month, supported by a rise in government bond yields after wage data and remarks from the Bank of Japan board member. Meanwhile, uh, labor unions made us made the strongest pay demands in three decades volatile overnight swaps put a chance of a march rate hike at nearly 80 percent so if you know this and you're you know uh, you understand the reasons why and you can position yourself which uh, again we have um in our private members group then um you know you should understand that this was likely to happen in terms of the yen strengthening so um, there is a chance, of course, for the dollar to kind of strengthen as well and counter that. But um, in terms of looking for a um, a trade uh, on this pair, again, it's a difficult one simply because I think the the, the dollar is um, in a in a pivot in terms of um, you know inflation. But I think once it's solidified that or expected that the the uh, dollar and the Fed will start to cut rates in June then I do think any pullbacks are going to be shorting opportunities. As I said before, um, the yen, I think, is, you know, the trade of uh, 2024 in terms of buying the yen. So, um, yeah, we've got that going on. So really any pullbacks up to here before looking at short trades or if prices make uh, lower highs in terms of, you know, a bit of a move to the upside, then make lower lows and then a pull back up to that lower high would be what i'd be looking for in terms of short trades so overall the yen should be the buy um providing the data supports that and the dollar should be really a um a sell against the uh, the yen not an all-out sell though against other currencies uh the dollar cad and the dollar cad came down into this demand zone bounced off of where this uh this area of support was within that demand zone. And so um, the Canadian dollar, again, not really interested. I'm not really interested in, in, in trading the Canadian dollar or even trading this pair. But if you are, then um, I think that's a decent buy. And again, just wait for the news to probably come out or maybe position yourself to go short. Um, again, last week we did have obviously price uh, sell off and the dollar get weaker. But in terms of um, timeline and when both central banks are looking to cut rates, both central banks are looking to cut rates in June, so um, it's a bit a bit of a harder trade to uh, to take in terms of direction wise. But um, uh, yeah, if you're looking for long trades, now is probably the time, or you can wait for the data to support the trade and trade after CPI, or you're looking for prices to move back up to this supply zone before looking for a sell trade. Uh, looking at the pound dollar and. Uh, Again, for the pound, um, the, the, the British pound uh, and the Bank of England are looking to hike rates later than the, um, than the Federal Reserve. And so you would think that the pound would have the advantage. And it says here that UK firms expect stubborn wage growth of over 5% despite CPI falls. So Bank of England survey shows firms' expectations on wage growth still high and central bank cautious on tight jobs market before rate cuts and so uh, UK businesses are expecting to face stubbornly high wage growth of over 5% over the next 12 months 
a level seen as unsustainable by the Bank of England. So the Bank of England are, um, are waiting for wage inflation to come down so that will get overall inflation down. Um, but at the moment, it looks like it's stubborn. And if, it's, if it remains stubborn, then the Bank of England are going to have to have a, a, a bit of a hawkish... Um, uh, I guess tilt to their uh, to their decision making, right? And they're going to have to hold for longer, and so it does look like uh, the pound should be uh, the buy. And so it says here, rate setters have repeatedly uh, pointed to pressures in the labour market for their cautious approach to loosening policy, with markets not expecting the first rate cut to arrive until the second half of the year. So the second half is definitely you know after June, right? So August is 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 what the, the market is pricing in. And so with the Federal Reserve uh, cutting rates in June and the um, Bank of England expected to cut in, in August, um, this is what should happen, right? It should, you know, move to the upside. Of course, no one knows the exact timing, but this is what is, you know, should be expected. And so um, this week with the dollar weakening, in fact, you probably drag that all the way down in fact, what I'll do is I'll just move this all the way up. Makes sense, but I'll just uh, move that here for now. And you've got a bit of uh, support and resistance within that area as well. So I think if prices do, if they do make their way all the way down to that uh, 126, then that should be a decent area to look for some long trades. Um, this is setting up for a decent stop hunt as well, by the way, for those who know about stop hunts. And I think if the data does support that, so let's say, for example, you know, you've got unemployment rate that comes in and it comes in higher than expected, then I think the pound could be a decent sell. And that would actually look like a stop hunt afterwards. But you'd need that in combination with um, sticky inflation or higher inflation uh, for the uh, dollar and for the Federal Reserve this week. So you'd need at least those two things to come in in order for you to look for short trades Um as prices come back inside this level. But for now, um, it has broken that supply zone. And so the nearest supply is going to be, if I zoom out a little bit, probably somewhere around uh, here. So yeah, just above, actually, no, in fact, I can kind of pull this down to around here. Yeah, so you've got inflation, uh, inflation, you've got um, uh, supply, sorry, uh, yeah, that zone there where we're in right now. So you can look for short trades, but I would probably, the safer bet is to kind of confirm it with the news. Um, but if you do want to take a trade short, you definitely need both um, unemployment to come in higher and inflation to come in higher for the dollar. Uh, pound yen, uh, the pound has been quite strong against the... Uh, the, uh, the yen over the past, um, you know, for for quite a number of years, it looks like. But I think with the, uh, again, with the Bank of Japan looking to uh, high crates, you should see now this start to roll over. Last week, there was an opportunity to look for short trades within this area here. And that is what pretty much happens. If you do get a pullback, if you're not in this trade, you do get a pullback up into that zone. I think that's going to be nice for a short trade. I wouldn't even, even though I'm a buyer of the uh, the pound at the moment, um, my bias is to buy the pound. Um, I wouldn't buy it against the yen. Um, I'd look for something uh, a lot weaker, like for example the euro or the Swiss franc. So that's where I am. At my bias, euro dollar. Um, the euro um, hasn't really. Um, strengthened in terms of uh, from a fundamental perspective uh, the the euro has kind of got stronger really based on a bit of dollar weakness and um, uh, there was some euro news and uh, it says here ECB officials back June cut with some door keeping the doors open to April so again the ECB still looking to um, cut rates at the same time the Fed are and it says here that momentum is building for the June interest rate cut that European Central Bank Pres uh, President Christine Lagarde flagged on Thursday. Speaking a day
day after she stressed that uh, additional data are needed before monetary easing can begin and that we will know a lot more in June. Policymakers echoed that prospect, but a few, though, suggested uh, a swifter move in April shouldn't be completely ruled out. So the possibility that there are rate cuts sooner in April, the possibility of that um, this week had an effect on the euro um, but not enough to basically push it to uh, against uh, uh, lower against the dollar, right? So the dollar was seen as the weaker of the two. But this now starts to set up um, um, in terms of uh, a short trade because if the uh, data comes out supporting um, and inflation comes out higher than expected this week, then I think that's going to be actually a really nice uh, short and to buy the dollar and out of the two my preference would still be to buy the dollar over the euro but if you are looking to buy the euro then you're looking for a pullback into uh, that demand zone there before looking at going long uh, euro yen and the euro yen again rolling over um, still in this trade um, so this is decent as well so this is pulled back and now we're looking for, um, you know, uh, really just pullbacks as, you know, rumors start to ramp up of, uh, about a potential rate hike for the, uh, for the from the Bank of Japan. Now, it could be an opportunity to um, to sell the yen in terms of short the yen if expectations don't come out as um, as expected. And maybe, you know, April might be the, uh, the, the, the time of the rate hike. But overall... I do think that any pullbacks into a zone should be a nice, uh, a nice buy trade um, in terms of uh, buying the yen and, and shorting the euro. Um, if you do want to be a buyer of the euro for whatever reason, then um, these are the zones. But I can't imagine really looking to buy uh, the euro, uh, especially against the yen. I don't really buy the euro against the Swiss franc. Um, yeah, so there's that. Uh, euro, pound, and the euro, pound again. The pound strengthening against the euro. I was waiting for a really a short, but it just didn't set up on this. So, unfortunately, I didn't manage to get involved in this. There is a nice technical level down at these levels. Uh, you know, this support, this demand zone here. Um, but you'd need really uh, disappointing news for the pound in order for this really to kind of move to the upside because again if we're comparing when central banks are looking to cut rates the pound is later and the euro looks sooner so the path of least resistance should still continue to be to the downside so any pullbacks in fact um, should be seen as uh, shorting opportunities but that might slightly change if again this week you have unemployment coming a lot higher than uh, forecasted so let's you know see what happens there uh, Aussie dollar and the Australian dollar um, you know been a been a buyer of the Australian dollar or definitely had a buy bias on that and uh, against the uh, US dollar um, it's done well this week we have come up into you know a bit of a pivotal um, supply zone but I would continue to see the Australian dollar strengthen can't say any pullbacks into demand I think should be uh, buys especially because uh, the Australian dollar are looking to um, and the RBA are looking to cut rates uh, later than the Federal Reserve so um, for me any pullbacks would be uh, buying opportunities and that would be really where my bias is either there or you know somewhere down at these lows of course the data needs to support the narrative um, if there is inflation data that comes out uh, that supports um, a rate cut um, sooner from the Australian dollar then of course you know all bets are off but while the data is supporting um, you know the RBA to cut rates after the um, the US dollar then uh, really this is where uh, my bias is going to be and finally gold so gold blasting through technical levels right um spoke about this last week i was thinking that it could be a potential stop hunt but not quite um gold 
it said climbs to records uh, on mix of Fed pivot and geopolitical risks, right? So rate cuts uh, helps boost gold and also as well geopolitical risks, risk off environment um, also helps gold, right? So bullion rallied almost $100 an ounce uh, over past five sessions and risk of stock market correction may have prompted buying. So uh, yeah, we've seen that come into play also as well. Uh, it says here from ING, China buys more gold in February. So China's central bank added gold to its reserve for the 16th straight month in February as reserve diversification and geopolitical concerns push central banks to increase the allocation towards safe assets. We believe this is likely to continue this year. So um, gold, I guess, just from a again, fundamental perspective, if you're looking at you know, a weaker dollar, then you should really look for uh, higher gold. It just makes sense, right? They work um, inversely uh, most of the time. Now, um, in terms of trying to short gold, it would be a very, very difficult to short gold as um, pretty much we're at um, multi-decade highs and there's nothing to kind of refer uh, to the left um, in terms of any kind of support resistance, supply or demand uh, or supply in this, in this case. So um, now we're in uncharted waters. So you really have to kind of either uh, wait for price to prove that there's supply here and then wait for a pullback um, or you're really waiting for either prices to move higher or make a um, lower high, oh, sorry, a higher low prices pull back into that higher low. And then, you know, you're looking for something like that, right? Um, whether you're buying or selling. But um, yeah, I think that gold um, should really be uh, the buyers, especially if, as you go into, you know, the election and, and uh, the rate cutting cycle. So uh, really, really nice. And again, for those of you who uh, know about stop hunts, I think this could set up actually for a decent stop hunt for a short. Um, but again, you would need the data to support that. And um, many traders don't be wouldn't believe that this could be some sort of stop hunt. It's, they think it's gone too far. But um, I guess uh, the guys in the group, uh, we know um, otherwise, right? You can get stop hunts that can go uh, hundreds of pips. Um, and you won't necessarily see it. Most people won't see it until after the fact. So um, when prices are down here, so if prices do close back inside this area by a certain amount of pips, then and obviously, you know, you've got the fundamentals on your side, then this could also be a decent move all the way back down to uh, this demand zone. But um, ultimately, I would probably look for uh, towards uh, medium to long term, I would expect gold to appreciate against the uh, dollar as the uh, Federal Reserve starts to cut this year. So if you've missed out on this trade, I think you're definitely going to have to uh, wait for um, some scenarios to play out, right? So again, if you're looking for higher highs and then a pullback like that, yeah, to get in. Um, if you're looking at long trades or you're looking at something, you know, that could happen somewhere around here where you get a move like that and then it moves to the upside. But either way, um, personally, I'd wait for a demand zone to develop before looking at going long. So uh, with that being said, uh, that's it for this week. Um, I hope you have a great weekend and uh, a fortuitous uh, week. And if not, just make sure that you uh, manage your risk and uh, don't blow up your account. There's no need to blow up your account or anything like that. Um, don't risk it all. Um, you know, just uh, manage your your risk, and um, and as long as you're going for good risk reward, you know you should be okay in the long run. As long as you've got a profitable strategy, right, in terms of a, a profitable approach to uh, to trading, and hopefully my videos are guiding you in terms of the right direction overall, right. So, um, yeah, have a great weekend, and uh, I'll see you next week.